Welcome to Matt's Automotive Channel. I'm currently recording part six of the video series for the engine rebuild on the 97 Mustang Cobra. And in that video, I ended up having to take these heads into the machine shop to have them reworked, and you'll see why in that video. So in the meantime, I figure while these are in the shop, I'll turn my attention to the block, get some new piston rings, and start working on that. And all I've been met with is a bunch of frustration. And so much frustration that I felt it'd be best just to have a separate video showing what I'm dealing with uh, with the block and fitting these rings and not include them in part six because it would just be too long. So anyway, I'm gonna squeeze this one in between five and six. I'm gonna call it part 5.5. So anyway, let's get started and I'll show you what I'm dealing with on the block. The first thing that we need to do with the engine block is we wanna check the bore of these cylinders. We wanna make sure that they're within spec and that they have not been previously overboard. We want to check for out of roundness and we want to check for taper. So <clears throat> I went ahead and looked up the specs for it and here they are. Here's the cylinder bore. This is the acceptable range in inches and then the max taper, which is six ten thousandths and max out of round is also six ten thousandths. The first thing we need to do is get the bore gauge set up. And I've set this micrometer uh, to the spec for the cylinder bore, which is 3.5512. So that's what this distance here is. And so now I'm going to fit this bore gauge in between here and zero it out. All right, so I think I have this all dialed in. Um, this is, can be a little tricky, but what I normally do is on the plunger side of the bore gauge, just kind of go in, in here, and then push it, and then line up the other side. And as you can see here, I got it zeroed out. So now when we go over to measure the cylinders, anything less than zero is going to indicate that the cylinder is a little larger than it than spec. And if it's the other direction, it's a little smaller. I can't think of any condition where it would be smaller. We should not observe that. So anyway, let's go ahead and take it on over to the engine block and then take some measurements. We have the bore gauge uh, zeroed out here. And we want to take a number of measurements here. We want to do three at the top and we want to do three down further in the cylinder. The reason we do the top and then the bottom is to check for taper. Typically, as an engine block wears, you're going to get more wear near the surface than you would down low. So if we do see a taper, it's going to be more expanded here at the top than at the bottom. So anyway, we got this zeroed out here. And let's go ahead and put this in. And basically what you want to do is get in there and rock it back and forth until you get the smallest measurement. And if you look here, boy, we're right on. Let's see if I can get it here. So I'm rocking it back and forth and boom. We're almost just spot on there. So obviously these uh, cylinders have not been bored out at any point of their life. Now, going longitudinally here, this is where you're gonna get the least amount of wear. The most amount of wear is gonna be this direction because this is where the piston skirts reside and if you were to have piston slap, this is where it would occur. So, and also probably near the top. So this is where I'd expect to see the most wear. And as you can see here, we're only about five, 10 thousandths. So that's not bad. And then if we go down further in the bore, we'll check that. And we're about half of that. So maybe about two, two and a half, ten thousandths. Uh, so we're very good. So anyway, we're going to do, and then also one uh, diagonally here. And then anyway, we'll go ahead and, and take all those measurements, write them down, and then we'll check to see if we're in spec for out of roundness and uh, taper. So anyway, I'll go ahead and finish that up and I'll show you the results. All right, I actually didn't bother writing any of these down because I didn't find any measurements that exceeded the six ten thousandths. So we're in pretty good shape. So I went ahead and ordered some standard size uh, DNJ piston rings. And you can barely see here, it's kind of faded out. Looks like they put a label over label and didn't reprint, but as you can see that these are standard uh, steel rings. So let's go ahead and put them over into the cylinders and check for end gap. With the uh, ring packages laid out here, you can see we have one for first ring. So that's one on the top, that's the compression ring. And the second ring down, that's the oil scraper. And then thirdly, you got the oil ring. So we're gonna start first with the compression ring, and this is the ring that's gonna have the tightest tolerance or the smallest end gap. So let's take one of these out and put it in and see what we measure. Okay, with these rings, they do have a top and a bottom. And uh, usually there'll either be a dot or some kind of indicator on the top. You can see that this one here actually says top right there. 
Okay, I'm gonna start here with cylinder number one. And the way to put this in is to kind of compress it, put it in sideways, and then rotate it like so. Okay, now that the ring is in there, it's very important that it be square. So I find it easy to square it up with one of the pistons. And on this, I just have the oil ring on it. So I'm just gonna push this down until it's nice and flat. The oil ring stops it. And we can take it out. And now we can go ahead and measure this end gap. Okay, I put uh, one of the new compression rings, which is the top ring in this cylinder from the DNJ set here. And in this uh, cylinder here, I kept one of the original rings that I pulled off the piston when I tore the motor apart. Now the specification for the ring gap is 0.3 mm or 12 thousandths of an inch. And when I measure the old one, that's exactly what it is. However, with these new standard sized rings, I'm measuring something much greater than that. I'm measuring 0.53 mm or 21 thousandths. And uh, you can see that's, that's the measurement I'm getting here, which is way too large. So if I, I just install these as is, I'm gonna get way too much blow by, which is gonna create higher pressures in the crankcase, possibly blow out some oil seals. It's not good. So my solution uh, for this, is to order a, a two thousandths oversized piston ring and uh, knowing that I'm going to have overlap and then just grinding down time within specification. I don't know of another way to deal with this. I When I first realized I had this issue, I did order another set of standard rings from another manufacturer and I had the exact same problem. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know why these standard rings have so much extra gap in there. Um, maybe the companies feel that it's just safer for them to do that. Um, if you have too little uh, end gap here, that can be catastrophic to the motor. If when the engine gets hot and the ring expands, these, the tips of these rings here will touch each other and if that happens, uh, you can blow out one of the ring lands from the piston, have catastrophic engine failure. So uh, if you're going to err one way or the other, you definitely want to err on the side of having too much gap. And also, if you plan on boosting the motor, adding power, anything that's going to create more heat in the motor, you obviously want to increase the end gap too. And there's charts that will help you help guide you with determining what size gap you need if you're going to modify your engine as such. So... Anyway, I got an order on for the new rings, and uh, we'll uh, take a look and see how to grind these down to get them into spec. Now, I know from previous experience that grinding rings can be very long, tedious, time-consuming, and if with a manual one, uh, your fingers are going to be feeling the pain here real shortly, especially after doing eight cylinders. And um, not only are we going to have to do the compression ring, we're going to have to do the secondary ring as well. So I'm going to modify this uh, so we can at least drive that uh, abrasive wheel uh, using a motor. And in my case, I'm going to use a drill. Okay, so I'll take the handle out. There's also a set screw here. Remove that, and then I found another uh, screw that had the, uh, it was a machine screw that has the same th uh, thread size and pitch as this. So I'm basically just gonna screw this into here. There, now there's our motor. So now I just need to mount this to the uh, workbench, and then we have a motorized ring grinder. I'll just use a zip tie here to keep pressure on the trigger here to keep it running. And there we go. Okay, I did get some uh, new oversized rings. These are the uh, 20 thousandths. Um, and I still am keeping the old uh, standard rings because I'm going to use the oil rings from this set since the clearances aren't nearly as important with oil rings. But uh, with these, I'm going to go ahead and start grinding these down and get them to fit. So let me show you how these fit first of all. I know I'm going to have some overlap. 
All right, um, let's check this out here. This is the 20 thousandths over ring. And as I push them down here, you can definitely see I have a lot of overlap here. I'll show you a little closer. So there's quite a bit there. So anyway, let's go ahead and start filing these down. Okay, a couple things to note when grinding rings. Um, you only want to grind one side, and that way you can always check to make sure that everything's squared. In other words, this one is unchanged, and so if you start grinding at an angle here and you butt these up, you'll be able to see whether or not you're grinding squarely. Now, uh, the other thing is, when you grind these, you want to grind inward, not outward. So we'll spin the wheel this direction, and the reason for that is you don't want any burrs on the outer portion of this ring because that could potentially damage the cylinder wall. And even at that, we're still gonna end up filing the burrs off of here. So, <clears throat> anyway, I've never done it with this uh, drill before, and I'm gonna leave this uh, unmarked side alone, and then I'm just gonna start grinding on this side over. And this is something that you wanna do real slow and check often because if you overshoot it, you're gonna have to buy a whole new set. look at this ring uh, you can see a few of the burrs there um, if I can get this to focus so I'll definitely have to file these off and then you also want to check each time that you grind to make sure that these are still coming together squarely if not the measurements that you take are going to be off it'll either be too close at the end or too close at the inner portion of the ring and that's going to throw the measurements off so make sure definitely that it's squared up all right, so before we try fitting it into the cylinder, we don't want to scar the uh, <clears throat> the cylinders up at all. So definitely want to file this before we try to fit it. Okay, I haven't even bothered to square it up because you can see that we still have some overlap there. So anyway, go back over to the grinder and keep uh, grinding and keep doing this process until we get our uh, 0.3 mm. Okay, so you may have noticed that um, this is wobbling back and forth here. And the problem is that the threaded portion going into the shaft here is not square with the shaft. So there's not much I can do about it other than uh, drill another hole in here and then re-tap it. So I think this is okay as long as I keep the ring moving with this, with the filer. So anyway, let's just give this a shot. Okay. And again, it, well, it looks like it's grinding pretty evenly here. I mean, I barely uh, ground anything, and it looks like it's hitting all the area, the surface area. And as I bring the uh, ends together here, it still looks to be very square. So anyway, I'm going to uh, keep doing this and uh, checking the fit, and then just keep repeating this process until we get our 0.3 three mm points there, or end gap. Okay, I just put the shop towel down here on the bottom side of the filer here and filed the ring for about 10 seconds. And uh, you can see there's definite material coming off there. So it uh, has a tendency to grind a little quicker than you think. I don't know how, what grit this uh, disc is, but it uh, it is pretty aggressive. And uh, you definitely want to do this at a, a relatively so, slow speed. You don't want to apply a whole lot of pressure because you don't want any... Uh, parts of that ring chunking out. So uh, just uh, take it slow, uh, be patient, and uh, you'll get there. Um, real important, uh, keep both sides of the ring in contact with those pins, that helps keep things squared up. And it's real easy to get it off center by applying too much force there. So again, just a little bit of pressure and just take your time, go slow. Definitely a significant amount more uh, debris there. So it's definitely grinding this. And uh, if we look here real close, just to make sure that everything is squared up, if you hold it up to a light and then put the ends together, uh, and if you see any light coming through, then you know you have a problem with it being square. But that looks pretty darn good. Okay, 
then again, the importance of grinding from the outside in. I feel the edge here and it still feels really smooth. So I'm not gonna have to worry about damaging the side of the cylinder here. But boy, I put my finger on the back side of this. I can definitely feel some burrs and even on the inside of this ring. So anyway, let's see where we are now. Oh, getting a lot closer. Still have just a little bit of overlap, but uh, I'll just keep this up until we open up that gap there. Okay, after a few more tries, I got the ring to, squid, to fit in here squarely, um, but we still have very minimal gap, as you can see here. If you put a light here, you can kind of see uh, where the ends come together, and also to see if it's square. That looks pretty darn good. Um, so anyway, we'll start putting a filler gauge in there and uh, just keep grinding until we get our 0.3 mm. After going back and forth a few more times, um, we're slowly increasing our gap. And it looks like right now we're at about uh, 0.2 mm. So I'm really going to slow it down, just do a few seconds each time on the grinder until I get to that 0.3. Okay, after a little bit more grinding, I got my uh, 0 0.33 mm uh, gauge to fit right in there just perfectly. However, if I move this ring over to cylinder one, uh, I don't, it's too tight. So when you do these, it's very important that uh, once you have it dialed in there, that it stay in that particular cylinder. So as um, soon as I pull this out, I'm gonna put it onto piston number three. That way I'll make sure that it goes back into this particular cylinder. Now also, one other check that you wanna do, and this is near the surface here, uh, is to push the uh, ring down further, because again, if you have a little bit of taper, it's gonna, uh, push this end gap a little closer down there and then check it down there as well just to make sure that you still have the amount of gap. If not, wherever the tightest point is in this cylinder, that's what you want to gap it to because um, again, you don't want that gap to get too small, then you'll have a catastrophic failure. If it's a little too big, not a, not a problem. All right, so I'm gonna push this ring down a little further into the cylinder here. and then check the gap again with my 0.3 mm. And now it does not fit. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more grinding to get the 0.3 mm down there. Once I have that done, uh, it's fitted for cylinder number three, then I will uh, put it on my piston, which is cylinder, uh, piston number three, and then I don't have to worry about it getting mixed up with any of the other cylinders. Okay, just for kicks, I went ahead and uh, found the uh, the uh, filler gauge that actually does fit into the gap at this point, and it's uh, 0.15 mm. So, it's about half the clearance there than what I should have. So, I'm going to have to continue to grind another 15 thousandths off of this piston ring. All right, um, all the work and grinding that I did to get this uh, ring to fit, I'm going to have to do eight more times. And then again, another eight more times with the secondary ring. So I'm not gonna show you that. It's just the same process over and over and over. So anyway, this video is getting long. I'm gonna call it quits here and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.